So it's the end of June and we've come down to the range today. Um, the last few videos we've done, we've had quite a lot of success with the row and muntjac, but the grass and the crops is really high now. So we're struggling to get sort of easy chest shots on the deer. So this time of year, it's a good time for me to catch up on a few jobs. Um, so one thing I've been doing uh, this morning is taking an old Shrofsky scope off the 243 and put this new one on, um, which is a ZAI 2 to 16 by 50. And what we're going to do this morning is get that bore sighted in, um, click it in on a steel disc, which is about 18 inch disc, uh, hopefully have a couple of shots and find that we're on the steel somewhere and then we can zero it properly as we would normally. So we'll go through the process of that um, and then we're going to shoot it obviously at 100 metres for the zero, go back to 200 metres and 300 metres, um, see what the drops are like, show you uh, the Shrofsky app which I can use with the binoculars um, which will give us um, the click values. We're going to put on a, a different turret for the scope which will allow me to click it up easily. Um, and hopefully you guys will get a better idea of, of how to um, get your drop factors on the rifles and scopes that you've got as well. So first things first, we'll get rid of all this out of the way a little bit. And I'm going to set the, uh, the rifle up on a back bag. Look down through the bore and find that big yellow disc. So this bag's a bit low, so I'm going to put this box of ammunition underneath it. So move that around until I can find the disc. So I'm filling up the whole of the bore or, or making sure the steel disc is in the middle of the bore and with a 243, I think that's an 18 inch disc so that fills it fairly well. So once I'm happy that's in the center of the bore, look up into the scope and I can see that the crosshairs are high and to the left. So obviously take these caps off. Just double check that's still in the right place. And then obviously without moving the rifle too much, just adjust the clicks high and low and left and right until it's just about in the middle. Double check again. Right, so it looks fairly central. So I'm pretty confident that with the first shot, we're gonna at least be on the disc. So we'll put the bolt back in and have a couple of shots. So with this particular calibre on the R8, there's a little um, metal piece here which stops the bolt from sliding in. So I just need to take that out to slide the bolt in. Then I can put the magazine back in underneath. At the moment, I'm just trying to get the shots on the disc, so I'm not too worried about my group size. So I'm only going to have a couple of shots just to get it roughly right. And then as long as we're sort of fairly central, we'll go over to the bank and I'll shoot prone to actually get the rifle zeroed properly. Just aiming dead centre of that big yellow disc. Well, that's pretty lucky, isn't it? So we've got a shot in that white centre circle. Just have another one to make sure it's not a fluke. Same place, I think. Cool. So we've rather accurately bore sighted that rifle. Obviously need to adjust it a little bit more to get it in precisely the right spot, but we'll go over to the, um, the bank and do that shooting prone. So I come back over to the bench now. Obviously we've got the scope all properly zeroed up. So I'm gonna put my windage turret cover back on. And then because I'm gonna use this in conjunction with my um, EL range binoculars and the ballistic app that's on my phone, um, I'm gonna leave this cover off and put on this ballistic turret, which will enable me to click it up the value that my binoculars tell me to, depending on the distance. So in the box here, 
Um, we have various rings if you just want to set them up at fixed uh, distances. Or what I'm going to use is just the turret here that goes up each click, depending on what your binoculars tell you to do. So this simply, in line with the dot here, there's a dot on the um, top of the scope that just clicks straight on top. And then we're good to go. So obviously we've got that ballistic turret set up on the scope now. Um, I've got my EL range binoculars, which I can link with Bluetooth um, to the EL range app on my phone. So if I open that up just to show what it looks like, um, I've got different rifle configurations. Um, so obviously we're going to select rifle one, which is the 243. It's got the rifle scope description, the height of the um, sight above the bore. It's got the ammunition and the rough weather conditions. So on the ammunition there, um, we've chronographed this already to get the precise um, muzzle velocity because the um, figures on the box can be quite different. And obviously if we're using this for precise clicking, then we need that to be exactly right. Um, so once that's all done, just save it in the app, upload it to the binoculars, which it already is. And then basically, whatever I range at any distance, it will give me a click value which we obviously put on the scope and hopefully we have a, a cleanly humane dead animal at the end of it. So we'll go back to 200 metres and have a go, see if it works. Right, so while we're on the range today as well, obviously we've got a couple of fun bits of kit to use um, that I use when I'm out stalking or, or looking at deer or just down the range of clients. So I've obviously got the um, Shrofsky straight compact telescope. Um, that's sitting on the Spartan uh, Davros Pro Head 2, I think it is, uh, and that's on the, the Spartan Ascent tripod, which does lots of different stuff and you can put legs out to different angles. Onto the scope, I can also fit um, the Shrofsky VPA, not VPL, that's something different. So that just goes on the back of the scope there. And then I can put my phone in, get uh, photos and videos of what we're doing on the range. Or obviously when I'm out looking around the deer, um, you know, some good reconnaissance pictures of bucks or, or stags at different distances. Okay, so we come back to what I call 200 metres, but actually when you range it with the binoculars, it's actually about 180 metres. Um, so the EL ranges are telling me to click the scope up four clicks. Um, but what I'm going to do to start with, just put four rounds in the mag. I'm going to have two shots um, on the top yellow dot on the big white disc. Just, just so you guys can see what the drop is on it. And then we'll go and measure that in a minute. And then once we've done that, we'll try going up four clicks and hopefully it'll be spot on for the crosshairs. So looking at the bullet drop on the big white disc, and obviously what I know generally, at this sort of distance, I'll probably just hold over a little bit. So rather than aiming halfway up the body on the Roebuck, um, I'd be aiming two thirds up the body, and then the bullets would drop into the kill zone. But obviously I've gone up four clicks on the ballistic turret, so now I'm just putting the crosshairs exactly where I want to hit the deer. I've just had one shot of that roebuck because it's just hit it straight in the middle of the kill zone. Um, so we'll save this round. It's quite a hot day and the barrel's getting quite hot the more shots we have. Um, and obviously that will start to widen the groups out a little bit and make me look less good. Um, so we will let the barrel cool down again and then we'll have a couple of shots at 300 meters and see what happens there. So now we're gonna have a long shot. We call it 300 meters down through the gap there so I've just range it with the binoculars and it's actually 291 metres. It's saying 13 clicks on the scope. But to start with, I'm going to have two shots with it on the 100 metre zero just to see what the drop is. So for this one, I'm aiming on the big white disc and I'm aiming at the very top edge of the disc at 12 o'clock. and it's missed it completely. 
So I'm going to aim at the crossbar that the disc is hanging off. Okay, and we've got a hit. So the first shot was dropping so far off the, the bottom of the 18 inch disc um, that it missed it underneath. So just double check. 13 clicks up. I suppose at this point it's important to say that particularly with this 243 with the really light bullets um, I wouldn't tend to shoot anything over 200 meters with it um, and really we're just doing this for the the fun of doing it um, it's good practice um, obviously shows you how all the kit works and what its capabilities are um, but it's also quite good to shoot at longer distances occasionally unfortunately if you wound one you might have to finish it off at a longer distance so you do need to know um, how to deal with that situation or if you go abroad hunting in the mountains then actually a 300 meter shot in the mountains is probably a sort of you know slightly above average distance so um, it's always worth practicing but just know your limitations uh, you know don't go out and expect to shoot you know munt jack at, at long distances and there's a yellow roebuck down there okay that's one shot that's the bottom of the chest And second shot slightly above it so it just goes to show you um, there's probably killing shots um, but the first shot was slightly low we probably would have got away with it um, second shot was a little bit higher so that was okay so the reality is that, that could just be me just squeezing the trigger slightly differently um, or it could be a little bit of wind as it's going down through the pit there um, going over that uh, slight bump in the ground uh, but it just shows you that what is a, an easily killable deer at 200 metres, at 300 metres, um, is a little bit harder. So we'll go down to the discs, have a closer look and measure what the drops were and just uh, see what happened down there. OK, so we've come down to the 100 metre targets. Um, so just a, like a brief reminder about how it all went down. Um, I pulled off like a fluky uh, two shot group here after we bore sighted the rifle at the very start. Um, I then put three shots after I adjusted it for, for this impact, aiming at this bottom dot at six o'clock. So that was three shots, 100 meters um, prone off the grass. And then we went back to 200 meters. Two shots have gone down um, about 17 centimeters. So I've come down to the 300 meter discs. Um, obviously the first shot I had, I was aiming at the top of the disc and hoping to hit the very bottom of it, um, but it went underneath somewhere, but I think it's probably only just gone underneath um, because the second shot I had, I was aiming on this top bar and it's dropped down to here, um, which just to give you an idea of the drop is about 45 centimetres. Um, so obviously then using the binoculars that told me to come up 17 clicks on the scope. And then we'll go over to the roebuck and show you where that hit. So come over to the roebuck target, or it could be a chamois. Um, clicked it up 17 clicks according to the binoculars. And first shot was a bit low. Uh, second shot was a lot better. Second shot was definitely a good killing shot. The first shot, we probably would have got away with it, but let's face it, it was a little bit on the low side. Um, but rather than you know blame the rifle and the, and the kit, that could just be me. Um, obviously, I could have had a third shot and it could have been a bit higher there. Um, so it's just, that's the reality of shooting at longer distances, um, need a lot more practice um, and obviously happy that your kit's going to do what you want it to do. So there we go, it's another one done, hopefully something a little bit different for you. Um, you get to see what happens down the range a little bit and obviously find out my limitations as a shooter as well. Um, so next month we'll be filming at the end of July. Uh, which hopefully the row rut will be on, so maybe we'll get some calling action done. So join us again then. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, and no doubt some of you have got some comments you want to make, so please leave those as well.